What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10 and either build them or fix them depending on how they rank. Now, today is our final video covering druids, at least for a while, and it's a bittersweet moment, right? We have had a lot of fun builds and a lot of fun ranking throughout the series so far, and you know, it's it's time to move on to uh, to greener pastures, AKA the fighter. And so that will be starting up next week, along with a video going over the new one D&D play test material with the expert classes. We're gonna have a deep dive into that next week. You all seem to enjoy the first time we did that. And so we're gonna do that again next week in conjunction with our initial ranking. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. But if you're looking forward to today where we go through all of the fun wildfire druid things. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. As you can see, most people who watch the channel are not subscribed, so please help us to reach our goal of 2000 by the end of this year. We are on track, but I need your help in order for us to get there. I think we can do it. I really think we can do it, but I need for you all to share the video with your friends and of course, click the bell so that you're notified when new videos are uploaded. So if you missed Tuesday's video, it'll be up in the iCard above for you right there. We went in depth on what each feature of the subclass does, as well as some really interesting strategies that we might employ in a build. Of course, if you haven't seen Tuesday's video, make sure that you watch that first before you watch this one, because I will not be going into as much detail as what I did in that video, but we're gonna go through the basics in this one. And so I think you guys are gonna really enjoy this. I had a lot of fun with this one. Um, I kind of had an idea in mind going into this build, but as I went through it, some of those ideas kind of went out the window for just, just the sake of simplicity and also just the sake of fun. And so this is a very simple build, one of my most simple builds. And I, I know I've said that before on builds where it's a lot more difficult to follow. This is one of my simplest builds to date. So very easy to follow, very fun and quite potent, so let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off, as always, our race. This week I wanted, I really wanted to go with something different and unique. And I threw around a couple of different ideas before I just came back to Old Faithful and I couldn't get away from it, the Variant Human. I, I know, I know I do Variant Human a lot on the channel or Custom Lineage, but I want so many feats on this build that I just, I can't resist taking it. It's just too good for me to pass up. So we're going very human. We of course get two plus ones and a free feat at level one. Of course, if you get a free feat already at your table, I would suggest maybe taking a tiefling. Um, and I have some other options that we'll talk about at the very end, but a tiefling is, is an interesting option here, having to do with all of the fire damage that we're going to be dealing. But We'll talk about that at the end of the video with our honorable mentions. With our stats, of course, we are using our modified standard array, like what we always use on this channel. Of course, if you're using point by a different standard array, if you're using rolled stats, hard for me to predict what you're gonna be doing at your table. So this is what we do on this channel and you can adapt your stats accordingly. We are going to be going with a 17 in wisdom, a 15 in constitution, a 13 in dexterity, 12 strength, 10 charisma and eight intelligence. Of course, you can just kind of dump the bottom three. I'm not really using them. The top three are really where it's at. So you definitely want to prioritize those in that order. And of course, for our two plus ones, I'm going to put one in wisdom and I'm going to put one not in constitution, but in dexterity giving us an 18 and a 14 respectively. So that 14 is gonna help us with initiative, it's gonna help us with our armor class, it's going to help us with a lot of different things. And an 18 is not too shabby for our spellcasting stat to start out. So I'm very excited about that start. As far as equipment goes, uh, I definitely want to grab a quarter staff here, as well as a wooden shield, just to help us out a little bit more with our armor class. And then a druidic focus. I know some people will allow you to have the quarter staff also be your druidic focus. If that's the case, great. If not, just make sure that you have one, of course. And then, of course, just get the best non-metal armor that you can get. Unless your table allows you to wear metal, or your character has a reason to wear metal. That's up to you, that's between you and your DM, but by and large, most druids do not wear metal armor. They can use metal weapons, just not metal armor. And so, if you can, great. If not, that's fine. Just do the best that you possibly can. All right, it is time to start taking some levels. 
and we are not starting with Druid. I, I know, I know I said it's going to be simple. I know, and I'm already breaking my rule here at level one saying, well, you know, you said it was going to be simple and here you are starting with a different class. I know, but the problem with this is Wildfire Druids really don't have a great reliable source of fire damage, which is so strange to me, right? We have, of course, all of these fire spells that we get from our circle form, but we do not have a reliable cantrip that deals fire damage. Of course, we get create bonfire. Of course, we get produce flame, but let's be real, those suck. So what I wanted to do was get a fire dealing cantrip that is reliable, that deals good damage, that we can use over and over and over again, and that uses our wisdom modifier, and that's the most difficult part. I can get Firebolt from a bunch of different spell lists in a bunch of different ways, whether it be racial, whether it be a feat, whether it be some other method, but getting it to where it's based off of wisdom is a bit of a challenge. And so that is where this multi-classing start is born. We are going to start with the Arcana Cleric. Now I know that I crapped all over the Arcana Cleric whenever I covered it up in the icon above right there. And a lot of you were quick to point out, hey, this thing's really good, this thing's really good. And I said, yeah, it's really good at level 17 and beyond. Who's playing past level 17? I'll wait. I mean, I, it, it's just very rare that you actually play long enough to where this Cleric actually gets good. But it's weird, we also get a very useful feature here at level one to us, but the class as a whole is not good. So I don't wanna go anywhere near past level one. I just want one level. And so what we get here, we get spell casting and we also get Arcane Initiate. So Arcane Initiate gives us proficiency in Arcana and it gives us two wizard cantrips on top of the cantrips we could have already learned. That's huge, right? We get to pick wizard cantrips and wouldn't you know, the spell we're looking for, Firebolt, is on the wizard list. And furthermore, it counts as a cleric spell, meaning that we get to use our wisdom modifier. So problem solved there. So we can pick up Firebolt easily. So we also get one other cantrip. Now, Green Flame Blade is also right there. And thematically, this makes more sense. Mechanically, Booming Blade makes more sense. So I'm going to say pick your favorite here. I'm going to roll with Booming Blade, but Green Flame Blade makes a lot more sense thematically, and it will stack on with your quarterstaff, of course, and it's very nice. So Booming Blade, for those of you who don't know, Booming Blade is a cantrip that you can cast, and it causes you to make an attack with your weapon, and if it hits, then it does a little bit of extra damage, and if the creature moves before the end of its next turn, it will take additional damage on top of that as well. I plan on using this feature as we go on in just a little bit. I'll explain that later. On top of that, we get our regular cleric cantrips, and I'm going to say taking things like sacred flame. It's not fire damage, but it still says flame in the name, so I want it. Uh, spare the dying, and then thaumaturgy or toll the dead. Toll the Dead, of course, is very useful, um, and but so is Thaumaturgy, honestly, so it, it's up to you. I think Firebolt is probably gonna be our main source of damage, so I could see not bringing Toll the Dead here and bringing Thaumaturgy instead. Makes sense to me. And then first level spells, we of course get Detect Magic and Magic Missile already. That's really good. That's really, really nice first level spells to pick up for free. Magic Missile, we would not have gotten access to otherwise and that gives us a free hit and some free damage, some free force damage. I'm not gonna complain about that, and of course we can upcast that later if we ever wanted to. Then as far as other spell options, I highly recommend swapping your spells out on the daily depending on what you need, but I'm just gonna mention a long list of ones that I would suggest trying out and seeing which ones you like. Bane, Bless, Command, Cure Wounds, Guiding Bolt, Healing Word, Inflict Wounds, Sanctuary, and Shield of Faith are all really good options to swap in and out as necessary. Then level two comes and now we start with Druid. Like I said, I don't wanna go any farther in this Cleric class because Arcana Cleric just immediately goes downhill once you hit level two and does not come back until the very, very end when you can get Wish. And so I have no interest in continuing, I really don't. So we're going to Druid and we are gonna stick here almost the rest of the way. 
almost, and you'll you'll see what I mean. So at Druid 1, we get Druidic and spellcasting. So Druidic is the secret language of Druids. We get to make language in trees and sticks and mud and dirt and whatever you want to do. It's also spoken and it, you can do a lot of things with it. Um, it, of course, is used to communicate with other Druids. So this can be ways of leaving secret messages for those that are similar to you. Uh, just a lot of a lot of fun ways that you can use this. And of course, spell casting as well. We are again another wisdom caster and we are another prepared caster. So you don't really have to keep up with two different mechanics as far as the spell casting goes. You can, of course, swap your spells out every day that you want to and of course with these prepared casters i'm going to be naming off a list of spells you may not be able to bring all of those in a given day but you can swap them out day by day depending on what your needs are and so i think that that's that's good make sure to try out what you want have a little bit of pre-planning thinking about your fights that are going to come ahead and plan your spells accordingly so i think that's a really good aspect of being a prepared caster is that you have a lot of flexibility where others do not for our cantrips i'm going to go with druidcraft guidance shillelagh and thorn whip we could have gotten guidance from cleric but i think it's better just to take it here there aren't a ton of cantrips that i really want from the druid list um, i really got everything i want with shillelagh and then thorn whip is a maybe uh it's not as necessary on this build but it's fine at first level spells we get absorb elements cure wounds again entangle fairy fire good berry healing word again there are going to be a few double ups here and so just pick which spell list you want to pull it from based on a given day if you need more cleric spells one day then bring it from the druid list and vice versa whatever you need to do and speaking of cure wounds at Druid 2, we actually just get Cure Wounds automatically prepared for us, so that's one spell that we can drop from both of our lists. And on top of that, we get Burning Hands as well, which is really cool. We also get Wild Shape, and Wild Shape is our main ability, allowing us to turn into a beast. But honestly, I'm not going to be using it very much on this build, if at all. I might use it for scouting once we're past level 8, that way I can fly. Or maybe if I want to be something really small and hide in somebody's pocket, but overall, I'm not really going to be using this for this feature. I'm going to be using it for our summon wildfire spirit. And this is going to have our little friend, whether it's a humanoid figure, whether it's a cat, whether it's a dog, whether it's whatever it is that you want it to be. You have your little friend. And of course, we went in great detail of this on Tuesday. And it does a lot of really awesome things. Namely, it can teleport. And so now we're starting to get a little bit of synergy here. So let's think about this. A melee character runs up to you and takes a swipe at you, right? And now you're not doing so great because you're a little frail. So what you do is on your action, you can cast Booming Blade. You hit them, deal a little bit of damage. They are now locked in place. You now teleport as your bonus action with your dog friend. And now they're just standing there by themselves. If they want to move and chase you, they're going to have to take some damage. And this is repeatable every single turn. If you are out away from everybody, you've got Firebolt as a decent way of dealing damage. And of course, we will be able to cast this from our dog's position once we get to level six in Druid. I'm going to refer to it as a dog the rest of the time just because that's what the official artwork is. Know that I'm speaking about the summon Wildfire Spirit. But there's a lot of really cool things that we can do with this. It can also fly, which is also really good. And that can give you a lot of really good flexibility, in my opinion. I absolutely love that. And we also get Wild Companion. And I don't think Wild Companion is all that great in this context because your summon Wildfire Spirit is going to almost always be better than having an owl. You could have an owl for the flyby if you just want the help action being used on yourself or your allies. I don't know that that's better than having your summon wildfire spirit active. I don't think it is. I would much rather use my wildfire spirit than using the wild companion. And plus, it's your main thing of being a wildfire druid. If you're not using it, 
then what's the point, right? At Druid 3, we get no features, but we do get second level spells, and there are a lot of them that I really like. We get Flaming Sphere and Scorching Ray for free, which is great. We also get Bark Skin, which is optional depending on your armor class, depending on what kind of armor you can get a hold of. Again, it's non-metal, so I tend to think that you might need help with Bark Skin, but you may have crafted some kind of armor off of the carcass of some kind of uh, thick shelled opponent. You never know. And so I, I think that that is something to reserve for when you need it and then just drop it once you don't. Dark vision, because we are a human, is possible. Or if you've got somebody who can help you with that, then great. Uh, enhance ability is a really good one. Enlarge reduce is also nice. Flame blade is flame blade sounds so awesome but overall it's not good it, it's 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 bad actually i would much rather use flaming sphere than use flame blade um i know it's an extra d6 but i mean 3d6 at the cost of our concentration i i just i don't think that's enough and the scaling really isn't enough for me and i i don't know i i don't think it's that great of a spell so i would continue using shillelagh personally but that's up to you. If you want to use it, great. It looks awesome. But mechanically speaking, it's a little underwhelming. Heat Metal is a must bring. Hold Person, Lesser Restoration, Moonbeam, Pass Without Trace, Spike Growth, and finally Summon Beast. Summon Beast is an interesting one that I hadn't really considered until I was looking back over the spell list. But now you can have your Poochiana and your Ponyta going at it at the same time. And now you're just a little, you've got your little Pokemon posse right there. And then you wild shape into something yourself. And then now you're one of the boys. And so it's it's really cool. You can, you can do some fun things with this. Um, I think Summon Beast is nice having a summon out there and that be what takes up your concentration because your beast isn't taking up your concentration. And it just does whatever you want it to on your bonus action. It's no action really required by you. You just command it on your bonus action. It doesn't say you have to say anything. It doesn't say you have to share a language. It doesn't say any of that. So it sounds like as long as you're willing to give up your bonus action, your dog can do whatever it is you want it to do, which is pretty cool. I, I really, really like that. At Druid 4, we got our first ASI or feat, only one level late, so that's not too bad. And so what I'm going to do here is just boost my wisdom by two. I want to go ahead and max out that wisdom. This is going to be the best thing that I can do for spell save DCs, for my ability to hit with my shillelaghs or my fire bolts. Any of my attacks that I'm using regularly, I want those to be doing the best damage and to be hitting and being effective the most often that they possibly can. This is the best way to do it. We of course also get wild shape improvement here so we can now swim. Not that we really want to be around water because you know our whole thing is fire, but we could have swim speed if we wanted to. And of course we also get cantrip versatility. I'll mention it here, but we get it at every ASI level where you can swap out some cantrips. I don't think you need to, but that's a totally up to you. At Druid 5, we get no features, but we do get third level spells. And we get Plant Growth and Revivify for free. Again, if it was up to me, we would have Fireball and Revivify. That makes a lot more sense to me because a lot of these is a fire spell and a healing spell. And that makes a lot of sense to me. Fireball and Revivify. Talk to your DM, see if your DM will allow you to bring Fireball because it's just fun. And I, it's not crazy. It's really not that crazy. It's not any crazier than anybody else getting access to Fireball, really. So talk to your DM, see if your DM will let you swap out plant growth for uh, Fireball. I think it makes a lot more sense thematically. Um, Conjure Animals, Elemental Weapon is a maybe. I don't think it's worth a third level spell slot personally. I know there are some people who love building around this. I, I'm not one of them personally. I, I just don't think it's that great. And of course, Erupting Earth is also a really, really good option. At Druid 6, we get Enhanced Bond, and this is what allows us to cast spells from the space of our dog. And we also get an extra D8 on top of all of our fire spells and our healing spells, which is really good as long as our dog is out. Keep in mind that this does not affect every single roll of damage that you do within a certain spell. This affects one damage roll. Specifically, I'm talking about Scorching Ray, how you would roll for one ray, and then that deals X amount of damage. The D8 would only go on one ray, not all three, unfortunately. But it's still good, right? 
So at this point, I want to take stock of where we're at and where where it is that we're wanting to go with this build, what it is that we're doing with it currently. So right now we have a few strategies. Number one, we want Shillelagh and our spirit up before our battle begins, if possible. They both last an hour and really most DMs are very forgiving on having Shillelagh always be up just because you can constantly cast it every minute and your DM does not want to hear you every single minute saying, I cast Shillelagh, I cast Shillelagh, I cast Shillelagh. No, nobody wants to hear that. So a lot of times DMs will come up with a standing agreement that Shillelagh is always up. Your wildfire spirit is not always up. So you're going to have to definitely work on that. Worst case scenario though, they do not stand in the way of each other because it's an action to summon your wildfire spirit and a bonus action to Shillelagh. So worst case scenario, you have one round of setup and then you can go to town after that. So you have a few ways of doing this. Number one, you have your fire bolts, which you can fire either from your space or from your dog space. Either I would recommend having your dog out there doing all the work for you while you're sitting in the back chilling and firing off all your fire bolts or have your dog right there with you and so when stuff hits the fan and there is somebody up in your face you can hit them with a booming blade and then peace out and that's really good right that's really really nice for keeping you and your dog safe they're going to take some damage when you leave as well which is also really nice and so it, you can really create a, a really fun situation that is kind of difficult to counter, to be honest, and I absolutely love that. I, I think it's a lot of fun. And then, of course, you have your higher level spells that you can cast as well. Conjure animals is a thing if you want to do that. Uh, again, I would stick with the Shepherd Druid doing that kind of stuff. Of course, that's up in the card above right there. And then I would go with just pulling out your big spells whenever you need them. Fairy Fire, of course, is a good option, but it does take concentration. And then, of course, you have your Summon Beast as well. That's also a really nice option on top of everything. So where are we going with this? What do I want out of this build? Number one, a lot of things as we are getting to this level are going to begin resisting fire damage. And that's a bit of an issue. Um, a lot of our damage is going to be fire. And so I want to make sure that we are effective as possible. And so I want to deal with that a little bit. I want to make sure we're, of course, getting higher level spells and possibly even getting some better summons along the way. Um, there are a couple of options that I'm thinking of as we go forward. And I just want to make sure that we can hold our own both as a spellcaster and somewhat as a martial character. I'm not super focused on the martial capability. And the reason is because I already built a martial druid. That would be the cloud killer druid that i covered up in the acrobat above right there that's more of your martial druid the one that's up in everybody's face and dealing a bunch of damage at the same time that's the focus there this one is more focused on your spell casting and making sure that your dog helps you to shine but on top of all of that you want to make sure that you're not just going down when you're in melee range and making sure that you have a way out and this build is going to allow you to have that kind of safety a Druid 7, we of course do not get any features, but we get 4th level spells. We get Aura of Life, which is okay. Fire Shield, which is not too bad. We also get Charm Monster. Conjure Minor Elementals, a possibility. Elemental Bane, Polymorph, Summon Elemental, definitely one to consider there. And Wall of Fire, of course, the classic. I definitely would bring a few of these every day. These summoning spells are actually not too bad to have in your arsenal should you need a friend. You could kind of start cycling out Summon Beast at this point and start bringing in these elementals instead. They're going to deal a lot more damage. They're going to be a lot more tanky than what you had before. And of course, you know, we have Warcaster to help us with our concentration. We are going to try to boost it up as much as we can as we go in the build, but we're going to do our best to make sure that we don't drop concentration on any of our spells if we can help it. A Druid 8, we of course get another ASI or a feat, and like I said earlier, I want to make sure that we are getting around as much of the resistances as we possibly can to fire. The best way we can do that is by taking the Elemental Adept feat and choosing Fire Damage. This allows us to ignore resistance to fire damaging spells, and that is huge, right? We are going to be running into things that can just shrug off fire damage like it's nothing. Unfortunately, this does not do anything about immunity. I really wish that it turned immunity into resistance and then resistance into regular. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't do that, and I'm a little sad about it, but it is what it is. Either way, this does also help us kind of to increase our damage. Anytime we roll a one, we get to make it a two, which is not impressive to me. It's it's not it's not really worth a feat slot. Honestly, the only reason I'm here is because of the ability to get rid of the resistance, because that is way more than one HP of a difference. You could take something different here, such as the tough feat if you wanted to. I could definitely see that going here. If you don't want to take Elemental Adept, I know that it's it's kind of mediocre, but I mean, it, it's going to help us to deal a lot of damage to those things that have resistance normally, and I like that. I think that's really, really helpful for us. Of course, we also get our final wild shape improvement here, and we can now fly and go up to a CR of one. Of course, if you're confused on what to use in your wild shaping, should you use wild shape? Like I said, I don't think you should on this build, but should you do that, I have a generic druid guide up in the eye card above, and I think that's my last card for the day. And that way you can check out that, and I've got a lot of really cool suggestions for you. At Druid 9, we get no new features, but we do get spells. And so we get Flame Strike and Mass Cure Wounds for free, which is pretty cool, as well as Conjure Elemental, Greater Restoration, and Summon Draconic Spirit. Summon Draconic Spirit is newer, but I think that that's actually a really interesting option to bring. Uh, and I think it's a pretty worthy use of our concentration, to be honest. I, I think it's a good spell, and I think it's a lot of fun to have this dragon going around breathing fire while you also have your dog breathing fire. You're just, you're just the fire Pokemon gym leader. That's all you are with this. And I think that that's just a lot of fun. And I think you all will enjoy this a lot. Okay, at this point, at Druid 10, I thought about multiclassing again. I came very close, actually. And the reason is because right now we're about to get Carterizing Flames which is really good. And I don't really want to put that off anymore if I don't have to. I don't want to put off my spell progression because we're doing pretty well right now. But I also think that there are other ways that we can make ourselves a little safer and also up our damage dealing potential as well. I ended up going against what I wanted to originally, but we will get back to it. So we're going to keep going here at Druid 10. We get Carterizing Flames. We went into this in detail on Tuesday, but basically when a creature dies nearby, there will be a little flame that pops up from their body, and the next creature that steps into it, you can either use your reaction to heal that creature or deal damage to it, whichever one you want to do. I like this a lot for the Barbarian or the Fighter or somebody that's up in the fray that has just slain something and then just steps into that space and you heal them for however much damage. I think that's super handy. Or if you've got something that's in the way of a creature from getting to you, they pass over that and then they take that damage there as well. Either way, I think that's really handy and I don't really wanna put that off if I don't have to. So we're gonna go ahead and take it now. And if I'm gonna take that, then I need to take Druid 11 because six level spells are right there. Heal is a big one that I really wanna take. Investiture of Flame is an interesting, interesting spell that I think is a very underwhelming spell for a six level spell. I, I think it would be a, a cool spell to have if it were like a fourth level spell, maybe even a third level spell because it gives you a, a, a little attack that you can do. It allows you to deal damage to a creature whenever it's nearby. But I mean, the damage is pretty underwhelming and I don't think it's worth my concentration personally. I think there are a lot better options out there such as Summon Draconic Spirit, but that's just me. And then finally, Sunbeam, which of course you could reflavor as being a fiery ball from the sky. It, it's totally fine. At Druid 12, you know, there's an ASI or feet here. I have to keep going with that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take Resilient Constitution. This is going to give us proficiency in Constitution saving throws. So we now have proficiency and advantage. You shouldn't be dropping concentration too awfully much now. It should definitely help you out a lot. Your bonus should be getting pretty up there now because you also have a 16 in your Constitution on top of everything. So you should be pretty good on concentration checks. And then Druid 13 gives us Draconic Transformations and, of course, Firestorm. Firestorm is going to be one of your most reliable fire spells, at least of a really high level. So you definitely need to get that, of course. 
And then in Druid 14, we get Blazing Revival. And Blazing Revival is going to, of course, bring us back up as long as our Druid Spirit is out. We can pop ourselves back up from zero and then have half of our HP. And of course, if you have another use of Wild Shape, you can just get your Spirit to come back out again and you're back to square one. So there you go. You're, you're doing pretty good there. Blazing Revival is definitely going to help you to be very, very effective in what it is that you are trying to do. And then if we're going Druid 14, then I want to go Druid 15 because Druid 15 gives us animal shapes. It gives us Earthquake. It gives us Incendiary Cloud, which normally I'm not a huge fan of, but it, you can't not take it on this, on this one. And then, of course, Sunburst as well. Same thing with Sunbeam. You can just kind of reflavor that one. Druid 16 is another feat. What can I say? I, I have to, I have to. This, this series of levels here in Druid, once you're getting between Druid 10 and Druid really like 17, it's hard to pass up. It's really hard to pass up because you're really getting things of really meaningful value every single level. So it's hard for me to put those off. I'm going to go ahead and take the Tough Feet here. If you took the Tough Feet earlier instead of Elemental Adept, I will have some suggestions at the very end for you. You could also just boost your Constitution if you wanted to. That would definitely be a meaningful use if you wanted to do that as well. And then Druid 17, we get ninth level spells such as True Resurrection. True Resurrection is a huge one to have around just in case, you know, just in case something crazy happens, you've got it. Now, levels 19 and 20. First of all, I know that none of you are really ever going to play at this level. It's going to be very rare. It's going to be very unheard of that you ever play at this level or heck ever even play this build. I mean, I, I, I doubt any of you are playing these builds. I think it's just fun to theorycraft about them. But for these last two levels, we get some things for Druid that I really don't need which is very weird to say normally we would get things like timeless body and beast spells i'm not wild shaping into a beast and i don't care about timeless body the asir feat would be fine but i think that there are some other options that we have that we could go with that are a better use of our final two levels and so for our final two levels we are multi-classing once again into fighter. I know it's weird. So you're thinking Dapper, why didn't you go fighter one, then cleric one, then druid one? Number one, because that's confusing and I'm trying to make a simple build. Number two, yes, that gives us heavy armor proficiency right off the bat. Yes, that gives us constitution proficiency right off the bat in our saving throws so we wouldn't have had to take resilient. But Despite all of these things, it would have put off our spell progression by one level. And that is one thing that I didn't want to do on this build. This build is too dependent on all of the spells. And our whole identity is tied up in these fire spells. And so I don't want to put that off any at all if I don't have to. And so I would rather put off our martial prowess because it's frankly slightly and by slightly, I mean a lot less important than our spell proficiency. So now we are going to have a little bit of extra martial capability. Not much, but it's something, right? We get a fighting style here at Fighter 1, and I would say either take defense or dueling. Dueling will, of course, give you a plus two to your damage rolls whenever you use a weapon in one hand. We, of course, can use our Chalet Lead Quarterstaff in one hand, and that's also with a shield in the other hand, so we have a decent AC. That's something you can do, or just defense, and you can have a better AC overall. And then we also get Second Wind, which is a nice little bonus action. Heal, this is nice when you are about to go down, possibly. Um, or you can just top yourself off, depending on, depending on what you need. The healing is only ever going to be 1d10 plus 2, which is not much especially now that you are level 19 and eventually 20, but it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. We're going to get some use out of it. It might be a good out of combat type thing to save you from having to use a short rest, uh, may save you from having to use your hit dice, but it's there. It's cool. And then finally, level 20, we're going to be a fighter too. And we of course get action surge. Action surge will allow us to do a couple of things. Number one, it allows us to cast two leveled spells. This is huge. We can cast two of our big spells and do a ton of damage. You wanna cast two Firestorms in a turn? You can do that. 
you want to cast two Booming Blades in a turn. Probably not nearly as effective, but you can also do that. Um, but this gives you another action that you can use. We do not have extra attack on this, and extra attack really isn't something that was really worth going for on this build. But Action Surge kind of is because of how it works and how it allows you to cast more than one leveled spell in one go and really just chunk everything that is on the battlefield if you play this strategically. So that is all for today's build. Of course, let me know down in the comments what you thought of today's build. Let's jump into our honorable mentions before we go. And of course, I had to go with some weird options. Number one, the Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer. The Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer is one of those that not a lot of people like, but there, there is a small group that swear by this subclass, that say this subclass is among the best of sorcerers. I personally disagree. I think it's okay. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's all right. But it does give us a little bit of an advantage when it comes to using fire spells. However, we would have needed to take several levels in it in order to really get our usefulness out of it that we would have wanted. And I didn't really want to give up very many levels in it. I already needed the cleric level, and so I really wanted six levels of this rather than the five that I had left. So unfortunately, it was just going to be too needy. Then the Rune Knight Fighter, if we had gone deeper into Fighter. Originally, this build did have extra attack on it, and we ended up losing some of our higher level spells. But I do think that it's worth thinking about if you're wanting to be more of a martial druid and be up in the fray. The Rune Knight allows you, of course, to be up there, do a little bit of extra damage. It allows you to grow, and um, it also allows you to have runes on your stuff. And so you could actually have fiery shackles that would deal a little bit of extra damage as well. And so that could have worked out. That could have been very flavorful. Definitely something to consider. And then finally, the Horizon Walker Ranger. The Horizon Walker Ranger is very unique in that it allows you to change the damage type of some of your weapon attacks to force. This would get you around any kind of fire resistance and essentially eliminate the need for Elemental Adept. But to me, it's more worth it to take a feat in Elemental Adept than it is to sink at least two levels into Ranger, if not more, just to get the ability to change things to force damage. That's just me, but I did think that that was an interesting option to consider, but it also kind of defeats the entire purpose of us dealing a bunch of fire damage. You're changing everything to force, but if you want to do that, totally fine with me. For feats to consider as well, I really liked the Metamagic Adept feat, again going back to the Draconic Bloodline for Sorcerer. Quicken Spell is really good, as well as Transmuted Spell, which would have allowed us to turn things into Fire Spells, which would have been good. Uh, I really, really like that option as well. And the Mobile Feat, finally, is a really great option for helping you to be a little bit more agile and be able to move farther on the field, do more things. I, I think it's really nice for your maneuverability. Druids are a little limited in maneuverability. Of course, we have our Flying Spirit that can really help us out with that kind of thing, but just something to consider. And finally, other races. As far as races go, the first one that came to my mind was a bit of a weird one, and it was the Orc from Monsters of the Multiverse. This actually gets the ability to not only dash a little bit better than others, but we also get Relentless Endurance. And so what this does is we would go down with our uh, Blazing Revival, get back up with half health. If we were to get down to zero again, then we could pop Relentless Endurance and get back up with one again. That makes you incredibly hard to kill, especially with the tough feet and a decent constitution like what we have here. Being able to just have a ton of HP, you're DM is just going to be wailing on you and you're not going to care because you always have 1.5 times your hit points available to you as long as you haven't used that feature yet. And then even when you hit zero, you don't hit zero. It's kind of dumb and I love it. The other interesting option, and this is something that if you all would like to see this in a bonus build at some point, just let me know. But having a small race that either could be carried or that you could ride your spirit. It doesn't say that your spirit is incorporeal. It doesn't say that your spirit doesn't take up its own space. Therefore, as far as I'm concerned, 
this thing can carry 150 pounds. Meaning technically, if you just wanted to cast Enlarge Reduce on yourself and reduce yourself, then you could just be carried as is. Or you could just play a small race and just ride it around and you have a flying mount at level two. That's kind of stupid and also kind of exploitable, especially with like Cavalier Fighter. I could see that being a very interesting build and I would love to eventually, you know, delve into that. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments. But yeah, those are my those are my honorable mentions for today. So that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Of course, next week we are talking about the new Unearthed Arcana and we are talking about the fighter class. I hope you guys are looking forward to it because I certainly am. Until next week, stay safe out there, stay healthy. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.